Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of M Creator Lore. So today is mostly a texture tutorial, so uh, if you're not inclined for those kind of things, then maybe skip this one or not, because we did some really nice textures today too. So um, if you're interested in seeing what we created, maybe stick around. But uh, what we're going to be creating today is a color scheme for Basalt, which is going to be another stone variant. And basically I needed to create the palette that we would be end up using. So I'm, I went with kind of like a dark black kind of gray, but has more blue tint in it, which should give um, us a little bit more color freedom in our own palette and stuff like that. So basically sometimes I add new colors to the palette as I progress and stuff like that with the development. And the reason for that is sticking with one select um, source of a palette is not always the best thing. Sometimes you do need to expand it. So it's just the way that it is when it comes to palettes and stuff like that. Like, you know, have your core textures. And as you can see here, we basically created something that's unique to its own color scale. So it's perfect for, um, having what we need. Uh, we don't really need to ramp any of the text or any of the colors with this one because it's such a unique shades and stuff. So I started working with some different outlines for basalt for the base texture and that would give me an idea of what I would be basically doing with the um, actual uh, cobbled texture which actually turned out really well and the mossy cobble one and then the polished version. So I'm pretty impressed with how all of them turned out. I'm happy with the design of it. But uh, as, I, as I started working with this, I needed to kind of get the right shapes and stuff and always drawing a nice little outline of seeing how things will work and trying to match up the edges from the top and bottom and then the right and left are really important for making seamless textures. And if you're wondering how I get most of them pretty close to the actual seamless part, that's basically what I'm doing um, when I'm looking at the image. I'm looking at where the parts connect at the top and bottom, and when it's in the corners, I need to consider the all sides in the corners locations. So um, that's basically how you make a seamless texture. And then when you want to redefine, make sure everything is all set up, what I ended up doing is just increasing the creating a new image which is uh, two times larger than the image that I'm working with and then I bring it into I'll basically tile it and then I can see what the corners and all the different sides and stuff will look like and then I'll make some minor adjustments based on that particular texture so basically if something wasn't aligned like in today's video what we there was a few things that could have been improved a little bit more um, just looking at a straight image like this straight on, it's not always easy to tell what the um, sides are going to be looking like and stuff like that. So it might look good as a single texture, but when you start bringing it into a 3D world with a lot of um, corners and stuff like that, it sometimes, ne sometimes needs to be uh, brought into a, a tiled version so you can kind of see what it looks like. So right now I'm just basically adding a little bit of noise just to kind of populate the texture a little bit more. I'm trying to branch out um, some of these parts so it's not, um, what do you call it? And you might notice that I'm going in and out when I'm looking at the texture. This is because when you look back at a far distance in the game or whatever, it's going to have a different look compared to being right up against the block, right? So it's important to kind of get the scale for the distance and stuff. And then I accidentally zoomed way out. So there's a few things I didn't like about this particular uh, design, mostly the lighter color shades. Um, there's too much of it concentrated in that one area. So I wanted to kind of make sure that it was a little bit finer and uh, thin out the, the lines a little bit. So I wanted to kind of bring it out and try to uh, align it so it would be less and just double checking to see how it looks paste it over into our single texture one and then I basically saved this as our default um, basalt uh, texture so now I'm basically working on the cobblestone texture 
which I'm going to use the same colors for the scheme. Uh, basically, I wanted to kind of bring a little bit of different um, textures into this particular one. So I was looking at different ways I could basically create um, the thing. And again, looking at the lines of where everything connects is really important because that's going to determine where all the pieces and stuff connect. So again, if we're um, looking at one side, then all the other sides need to connect to. And corners are going to be very, um, basically anything in the corners will end up being a larger block. So basically there's gonna be quite a few different cubes. That's why I um, created a uh, line break over on the right hand side. So it would basically allow me to uh, separate that tile a little bit more. The corner one we don't have too much control over, but at least not with this particular uh, shapes and stuff, but uh, we will be adding in just for some regular colors at this point. And then I ended up uh, adding a little bit of noise and shading uh, for the other opposite sides. So we had a few other colors to work with that we could end up doing that. And already it's starting to look really good. So basically I'm just kind of filling this in and trying to get it um, kind of like a 3D uh, popped out version. You might be noticing the shadings looks in, looks uh, almost like it's coming out. And that's because the light when you're working with textures uh, for Minecraft, it needs to be at the top. Um, I believe it's the top left corner. I think that's where most of the lighting comes from when Minecraft designs their textures and stuff. So it's pretty standard for art, uh, unless you're working with a different type of 2D, which is like top down or something like that. And then you'll have light probably coming from the front and kind of um, thin things out on the uh, sides and stuff like that. It's a little bit different working with top down, but that's a, that's a completely different thing that we would probably need to go into. With that being said, if you're interested in pixel um, tutorials and stuff like that, I could always do a couple things based on the stuff I know. I have some resources that I can definitely build the tutorial series off of um, that could um, help with uh, the thing. I found a forum not too long ago that um, explains it more in detail and I could bring it into a video form if you guys were interested in something like that and might help you with uh, making pixel art and stuff. All right, so that's basically the cobblestone texture. I just needed to make sure I think everything aligned perfectly. And already I'm starting to see some lighting issues with some of these uh, corners. So I didn't get it right the first time. So I need to make sure that uh, these parts are set up properly. So I needed to kind of um, fill this in a little bit. I need to figure out what corner it was causing problems with. So I think it was those two and that looks a little bit better, but there's still not enough noise in the um, the center part. So I have to kind of figure out where I'm going to be putting that and what corners I need to put it in. So basically it's just like one pixel by one pixel when I'm testing these things out so I can see what it looks like. Uh, sometimes I add a couple pixels just to kind of get a feel for it and um, what it will actually look like when it's in the game and stuff. Now, this is a tiled version compared to our other one. Now, I basically filled in the changes that we made here, and then I could basically save the cobble texture. And now what we need is the mossy cobblestone. So uh, we needed to grab our mossy color, and I was going to uh, set the texture all to one thing, and then I'm like, you know what, I probably should do it per pixel and give it some depth. So the reason why I'm doing that is even though that I'm using a transparent color to kind of blend it in, uh, because sometimes, you know, having high contrast and stuff is not the greatest thing. And when you're working with pixels and stuff, it's a little bit harder to work with. Uh, the, when it comes to pixel art, there are some, some exceptions that can make it a little bit easier for designing your pixel art. Um, for example, if you wanted to kind of blend the textures in a little bit more, it would be an option to do what I'm doing. Generally though, you want to do it per pixel thing and basically blend it in with the right shades that you want. Then it's uh, consistent all the way through. But when you're working with multiple textures, 
and multiple shades and different textures with uh, different colors and stuff like that it becomes a lot harder to blend them in so that's why i decided to go with like a little bit lighter um like more transparent uh, for the green because then it will automatically take those colors underneath it into consideration so it brings it a little bit more to the depth and stuff and it shouldn't be that big of a deal because there is a lot of the other original texture still showing where it won't make too huge of an impact of um, giving it like too much depth or something like that right so it won't be too unique in the color scale where it will be too noticeable and when you're working with game development and stuff like that, that's kind of the rule of thumb. I mean, there are some exceptions that you're going to have to make in order to make things work. And it just is, right? So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the same thing for the lighting. And I wanted to see if there was any filters for the um, texture, um, which we can basically go ahead and filter things out. So I did import a new one because I wasn't too happy with the changes that I did and I just basically added a new layer so I could try playing around with the filters so um, basically there are some built-in filters to paint.net that allow you to um, adjust how the, the filtering goes and stuff like that so basically what I'm doing right now is I think I have it on overlay which has a little bit of a different effect when it uh, applies to certain textures and stuff like that. Uh, the brighter the color, then you can kind of see the different filters there are. And some of them work, some of them don't on certain ones. And it's, it's I like to pass it through just to see when I'm working with something like reflection or something like that to see how it actually looks. This way I can, you know, determine what will be the best outcome for the actual image. And in this case, what I ended up doing was I basically just kind of blended the textures a little bit in with the two filters that I ended up going with. And overall, there was pretty good uh, texturing with that. Now, there's only a couple things that I didn't like about it, and that was what was those two pixels right there. They were a little bit too brighter than the other parts, and I think that it looks a lot better the way that it turned out like this than comparing it to going with... Um, anything else. I, I don't even know if I actually used a filter. I probably didn't. I don't remember using a filter. I think I just went with the normal blending mode. And then I needed to import it into mCrater. So basically just all our textures. Now we're not going to actually start working on this. Uh, we're already pretty uh, far into the video. So um, we'll probably end up making all the different types of blocks and setting up the generation for both basalt and marble uh, next episode. And then that way we can uh, start working on, after that, the final one, which I want to add is Shale. Or Slate? No, Shale. I think it's Shale. It's um, a rock formation that's uh, quite common up in these parts where I live. And a lot of the mountains and stuff have some shale around it and it's very flaky and stuff but we'll be creating that in our own mod so uh if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below write the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out mm -hmm.